We're on one of those days that has a formal definition. If you remember the formal definition of uh, limit, you remember the epsilon, the delta. Uh, it was kind of complicated. It was much more complicated than just finding the limit. Uh, now we're on the definition of a derivative. We'll get to that in a moment. And later we'll have a definition of uh, what's called an antiderivative integral. The, um, and uh, we'll be seeing those three particular definitions that are the core of most of calculus. Uh, that uh, those lessons will be a little bit more involved because you have to think about what the idea is so you can cement in your mind why something is true before you can go ahead and use it in a bunch of problems and use simpler forms of it. And so, while we won't be using the method I show you today to find derivatives for everything, there'll be much other simpler methods we'll be using, you do need to understand where a derivative comes from in order to be able to use it in later problems. So here we go. Last time we talked about the tangent line to a curve. And then we talked about the slope of the tangent line to a curve. Uh, um, and we talked about these, I these ideas here. So first I'm going to uh, go ahead and take a look at um, if I wanted to approximate a tangent line here, one thing I could do is uh, pick, say I was trying to find the, ta the slope of the tangent line right here. And we'll call that, that place, that point, x1, y1 just a random point. So we're not assigning a number again when we do def definitions. We don't want to do a particular case. We want to do a general case because then that applies to everything. Okay, moving on. In order to find the slope here, I need a second point. Now, when it comes to the function, I, I mean, I could draw a line, a tangent line right here. Um, but the problem is nothing else on that tangent line I can say for sure where it is. There is no way for me to be able to tell exactly what that point is. So I have to look at the function. The function is something, there's an equation for that function. So the function, there are points on that that I can look to and know exactly where they are. Um, but the problem I run into there, so say I pick a uh, second point here that is and we'll call it x2, y2. And I draw a line between this one and the point I'm trying to find the tangent line. Whoa, that's a little curvy. There we go. So now I have something that's an approximation, but as you can see, it's not a very good estimation uh, because these two points are far, kind of far apart. They're not going to estimate the tangent line because the tangent line really just touches in one point. Um, now, so what we want to do is have a really good estimation of the tangent line. And one thing that we could do is if these two points get closer and closer together, the tangent line gets approximated better and better. So say I have a, uh, my second point, instead of there, I choose it to be there. Then my uh, tangent line is going to look something like this. And we can see that's a much better approximation to the green line, the green tangent line I have drawn. The orange one is better than the red because the points are getting closer together. It's more of an approximation. And ideally, if I slam this point, the second point into the first point, I'll get my tangent line. Because the closer and closer and closer those two points get together, the, uh, cl the more accurate this is to trace my tangent line. And so we're going to use the idea of a limit to show give us a definition of what is called a derivative a derivative is the slope of the tangent line the slope of the tangent line a derivative is the slope of the tangent line okay we'll i'll say that over and over and over again and it, and the slope is rise over a run slope is rise over run. So we're going to be using that idea to calculate, to get our I definition of a derivative. So the first thing uh, I want you to see is I'm going to change, change a few things to make it more formal. The first thing is instead of labeling this as uh, y1, I'm going to say f of x1. Remember f of x, 
and y. Those are uh, often used as synonymous terms. The function notation, though, indicates what the variable I'm using, what's de dependent and what's independent. And so it's uh, in formal definitions, we're going to go to it much faster because it's more, much more useful uh, when we extend the problem. And so instead of saying y2, in the same manner, I'm going to say f of x2. We'll see why I do this in a minute. So now, if I want to calculate the slope, rise over run, remember that's like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the slope. But I'm going to uh, go further. Again, this is f of x2. As I said over there, I'm going to ch change the notation slightly. f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. And I'm going to do something that's kind of um, a tricky notation here. Remember the letter delta? We used the lowercase delta back when we were doing the definition of a limit. Now we're going to be using the uppercase delta. It looks like a triangle. And this often is a symbol that means change. Or how much has something changed? And so if I say delta x, I mean the change in x. And so as I look here at x2 minus x1, that idea is how far are my two x, uh, the two x coordinates from each other. I have two points. They have two x coordinates. This is telling me how far they are from each other. How far? And remember, my goal is to make that them slam together. I want that distance to be nothing. I can't make it the same point. It won't work that way. I can't uh, exactly make it exactly that way, but I can bring it closer and closer and closer and closer and closer together and see what happens. So when I say delta x, what I mean is x2 minus x1. Okay, so I'm going to substitute now. I'm going to change x2 minus x1 into delta x. And also I'm going to substitute somewhere else. I'm going to substitute up here for x2. And x2, I could solve this equation right here. x2, if I added x1 to the other side, I would get x1 plus delta x. If I added x1 to the other side, that's what I would get. So if I do those substitutions here, those two substitutions, this is what I get for my slope of this line. Instead of x2, f of x2, I'm going to write x1 plus delta x minus f of x all over, instead of x2 minus x1, x2 minus x1, I'm going to write delta x. Okay, and this is getting really close to our formal definition of a derivative, the slope of the tangent line. But I'm going to uh, change a few things here, just that said x1. Uh, now that I only have delta x and x1, I don't need to differentiate th between the two. What I mean is we had x1, x2 because we had two points. Now I have x1, that's one point. Delta x is how far the second point is from there, how far they are. And so I don't need to say x1, so I'm just going to simplify by just saying x, because delta x and x mean different things. x is the point where the tangent line is, so in this case right here. And delta x is how far is that second point that I'm using to approximate the tangent line? How far is it in the x direction? Okay, so this is our start, and we're going to continue in just a moment.